Now, <clears throat> another feature is mana. Mana is 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 uh, is a life force which is impersonal but powerful. I think of electricity as an analogy to this mana power. It permeates everything. It's sacred, must be handled carefully. <laughs> it can be dangerous and get you if you're not careful, you know. It can be manipulated and controlled, just as electricity is manipulated and controlled. But if you don't handle electricity well, it'll get you. On the other hand, if you handle it well, it can be very helpful for you. So this, per this, this notion of this life force that permeates everything, we refer to as mana. It's an anthropological term that anthropologists derived from the South Sea Islands. Uh, years ago when they were doing their anthropological research and, uh, and asked these uh, peoples living, these tribal peoples living in these islands, what do you call this life force that you're so concerned about? They call it mana, mana. So it comes to us from, uh, from the South Sea Islands. Now, uh, mana then can be used to, to either evil effect for evil purposes or for constructive purposes. It's the source for magic. Mana is grounded in magic. Uh, magic, I'm sorry, magic is grounded in mana. <clears throat> what is magic? Well, there's two kinds of magic. One is based on the principle that like begets like, okay? I have two sons, and people often comment that they are very much like me. Like begets like, you see. And I have two beautiful daughters that people often comment seem very much like Grace, my wife, you see. Like begets like. Calves, I mean, cows beget calves. So like begets like. So, um, um, <clears throat> how do you apply this then? How do you take this principle of like begets like? Well, suppose there's a drought and the rains are not coming and we need rain desperately. So, the tribe will call on an expert in making rain to come and to produce rain. So he will employ magic, most certainly. He may also employ the worship of the divinities, but for a starter, he will most certainly use magic. How will he do that? He will get a bucket of water and pour the water out of the bucket. What's he doing? Like begets like. The clouds overhead are not producing rain. The bucket is producing water. And so hopefully the mana residing in the bucket is going to also affect the mana in the clouds so that just as the bucket is emptying out water, so the clouds will also begin to empty out water. Like begets like. The water in the bucket will beget rain from the clouds. That's the principle on which one form of magic operates. The principle of like begets like. Now, another principle is contact. Where if you put a powerful object against an object that is not powerful, hopefully the powerful object will infect the weak object with power. 
So how does that work? Well, what do you think of as you think of, uh, of the African continent or the Indian subcontinent that represents real power, ferocious power, well, in the Indian context, it would most likely be a tiger. And in the African context, it would most likely be a lion. Believe me, when a lion roars, if he's near to you, you will run and climb a tree pretty fast because he is powerful. They are not a joke, lions. I mean, have you ever been chased by a lion? How many have you been chased by a lion? I tell you, I never went into the Serengeti Plains walking. The Serengeti Plains were not far from our home where we lived in Tanzania, but we would always drive in a car with an enclosed back. We'd sit in this pickup truck, but in an enclosed back. And uh, we would then drive quite close to where the lion were. But I tell you, when we're in that pickup, even with that enclosed back, if the lion would roar, oh! We would take off like crazy. We were terrified. They are strong. Lion. I mean, you don't play with lion. Okay. Now I need power. I need power like a lion. How will I get that power? Ah, get the hairs from the fur of a lion and put those hairs in a little pouch and sew that pouch up and then tie that pouch around my tummy. And so... The pouch with the lion's fur in it is against my tummy. And so that will empower my stomach for all that it needs to accomplish because it is being empowered by, by a lion. And especially helpful if I'm going to fight my enemy. I mean, lions, when they charge, they get, their, they get the deer they want to get. You just hardly, hardly can get away from a lion. And so you tie some lion fur against your body when you're going into battle against other warriors. And believe you me, uh, probably if you have more lion fur than your warrior friends have, uh, warrior opponents have, uh, you will win the war. So that's, that's contact. Now, usually it's used not in such violent ways. Uh, I mean, I mentioned about these babies being brought to the clinic there that my mother was opening at Bumangi back there in 1930. Seven thirty-eight, and um, uh, every baby, every baby that the mothers brought had some sort of pouch sewed around their arm or tummy or whatever like that. You know, it was it was magic. That was the idea. It was magic, and all the stuff they put in their pouches. I don't know what all it was, but a bit of lion fur was a good idea. You know, because boy, they really have power. That's the principle of mana, which is expressed in magic can be manipulated, it can be uh, used for constructive purpose, or, or it can be used for destructive purposes. Hey, this is the stuff witches work with. Witches work with this. And they are, witches are up to no good. Witches are about destruction, about death. And my, some witches were known as being very powerful. Why? They had strong mana. They had access to strong mana. And they knew how to manipulate it very effectively so they could kill your opponent. So if you, if you wanted to deal with your opponent, you go to a, to a witch that had real strong, real strong mana. And, um, and uh, the witch would say, well, you know, okay, I'll, I'll kill your enemy, but uh, this, this kind of medicine is very costly. This kind of mana, very, very costly. So, you know, I want, I want 10 goats kill your enemy. If you give me 10 goats, I'll, I'll deal with him. And so you, you pay, you pay the witch the necessary money because the witch has insight and access to very powerful mana. This, of course, is the occultic stuff that you're, you're raising and talking about a bit, a bit earlier on today. So that's one feature of these traditional religious uh, systems the belief in mana, and the uh, conviction that mana can be manipulated in 
ways which bring uh, either destruction or or uh, which which uh, uh, deal with deal with uh, forces that may threaten one, and um, one can um, so one can use it destructively or positively, and uh, it it usually takes an expert to really know how to handle this stuff, like me with my electricity in my house. If I'm an electrical problem, uh, I may call an electrician in, an expert, and so it is with mana that you might handle it yourself, but if a wise person would probably get an expert, like a shaman, a shaman in. But if you want to use the, 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 the magic to destroy somebody, then you get a witch, uh, which is rather different than a shaman. A witch is somebody who gives himself to, to destructive purposes, using these powers destructively. You know. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.